How's everybody doing? Matt Sardo from Monkeys Fighting Robots. This is the panel breakdown. It's been a few weeks. I do apologize. We ran a Kickstarter for Tales of Monkeys Fighting Robots. Number one, the weekly comic strip that we put out. And I write an artist, Jamie Jones, creates these amazing pages. Uh, the books came in and I became a distributor. I had to mail a whole bunch of these out and that basically took up all my time over the past two weeks. But we are done doing that and now we are back to the panel breakdown and I am super excited. Uh, but if you want to read Tales of Monkeys Fighting Robots, go to our website and click the comic strip tab and you can read from the beginning. We're on, we're gonna be coming out with uh, strip 49 this week. And uh, we have it penned out to go 100 pages. And this book goes 28 pages. And I will have more details on how you can buy this on the website. But yeah, uh, amazing artwork by Jamie Jones. I'm really excited about this book. Uh, and it's all shipped out from our Kickstarter that was successfully funded. So now we are back to the panel breakdown where we get to talk about comic books. Super excited, super excited, as you can tell. As you, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. But like comic books are the one thing that makes me happy. And this week we have Cable Number One from Marvel Comics. Uh, the writer is Jerry Dugan, and Phil Nato is the artist, and he also does the colors as well. And Joe Sabino is the letterer on the book. And we're going to kind of focus on lettering today and kind of panel layout uh, because that's where this book can kind of improve a little bit. Uh, story's good. Pretty comic booky. I just realized this is a, looks like a Cylon in the background. So I got a Battlestar Galactica thing going on here. Uh, but that's kind of cool. I love when I just realized that some stuff is going on here. But I really love this color cover. Uh, very 80s. Uh, very like in your face. Like you know you're going to have like a fun time. And you don't even need this you know, tagline. Just look at the smirk on his face. I love this. The smugness right here. And you see all the other stuff going on in here. And you know this is like it's Goonies. This is Goonies right here. You know, and uh, it's it's very exciting. It gets you excited to read the book, and I love what they can do with comic books now. Cause I was like, oh man, my book's all bent up and everything, and I was like, oh no, it's just a pol poster that's been sitting in my book, my uh, my drawer for a long time, and I pulled it out and unfolded it, and here you go, and that kind of adds to the time traveliness of Cable, cause like this is the younger version of Cable. But yet, it's an older poster that's been folded up sitting in your drawer for 20 years, uh, you know. So there's multiple layers that you can go on with that if you want your brain to go deep and thought on comic books. And that's kind of what I like to do. Um, but yeah, let's dive into this real quick. Phil Nato has a really interesting style. And it's, you know, you got some watercolor action going on there. Um, and the tones are, are lighter and, and, and more kind of like muted tones. So it's interesting when you play with panel design and lettering, because the lettering really pops out on the page with Phil Nato's work. Where like, I love this holy truck, you know, that's going on here, that's written in the background, part of the panel. And I think you got the question mark going over his eye. You have the lettering is just, and the lettering sound effects are just built into the page. And it adds to the texture of the comic book where I feel like this and this are added on top and it's like a layer of one on top of the other where like this is part of the story and it feels more organic than this cable logo just slapped right on top of there. We have some good action. There's an action sequence going back and forth here. And you can see how things are going along. You see how the the dialogue comes straight into his eye and then it goes this way and down and across. And then we get to this page. This is the page I kind of want to talk about here, just the way it's set up. Cable defeats Wolverine, the Silver Samurai announces it, and then they have a big page where witness mutant supremacy and then you have the yes here. So if you look at the crowding of words here and the way this is set up, I feel like this would have page would have worked panel would have worked better here if Cable and Wolverine if the Samurai Silver Samurai were not in the page this panel right here and you just had you're not gonna kill me are you and maybe Wolverine goes Mrr. 
And then you have the Silver Samurai here where this could be, I don't know, bigger. And you can have this word over here or up here where it's cables victorious, by pinning, witness mutant supremacy. But here, this feels crowded where you have more space here for the lettering. And then you try to have a powerful yes here, but you're boxed in by the panel. And I know that you want like this nice X and then you want him to break the panel, but maybe he could have broken the panel down low and had the yes up higher and wider. It, this is a give or take kind of thing, but like with Phil Nato's style, and the watercolors and the muted colors, like this witness supremacy and this right here, like the big yeses, they just feel like stickers. And that's where maybe uh, there should be a conversation between Sabino and Nato and the editor and be like, okay, what works best for this book as opposed to these type of things? And they may have agreed that this worked best for me. Uh, it takes me out of the story. Like, I like this where I have to analyze the panel. You see, you got the grr, and then you got the scrack, you know, like built in there. Like, I, that's something there. And then talking about panel design, you have these black panels, borders for the Silver Samurai in this panel, and it really darkens the page. And that could work with the booze and the angry and the punchline, and that could have been the point. But when you flip over to the next page, and it has the white, like things kind of the silver samurai feels brighter, and you know everything seems to kind of work with Phil Nato's colors. Here is another example of organic lettering versus kind of like inorganic lettering. And you have like the crick and the oof. Like this feels part of it. This feels, I don't know, kind of has an indie feel to it. And then you like you have this kind of cloud here where he's doing the telekinetic thing or, you know, his telepathy to talk to him. But like these kind of feel token, these kind of like feel like generic telekinesis word balloons if that's something that there is and Marvel might have that. Here you have something that feels organic and then these balloons feel inorganic. And I love this monster and uh, I love the layout where he's small but then you have this like weird run here where I feel like it could have been bigger if you did more of the organic looking where it was like run and I know that you have to say like I'll cover you, but do you even need that? Like we, you know, you could put that back here, you know, like run where it could have just been like that. And then like, I'll cover you back, stay back or whatever, you know, or I'll cover you uh, right here where you'd have the story kind of lead into it. I do love this panel. And this is where I think conversations about lettering and uh, with the editor and the artist and the writer, and you could have just kind of thought about it uh, kind of like, brainstormed a little bit more like this fairy tale thing that pixie does to the monster or to the girl that's scared and gives her this look and it's very um, jim hentony but then you got like the pink borders and then you have like the pink font colors and the pink balloons this doesn't feel like a sticker anymore when it kind of like uses the color from the page so maybe what you could have done is maybe use this gray for uh, Cable's voice and maybe a different color for Pixie's voice and kind of change things up to make it blend a little bit more or use a color from the page if there's a color that's coming through here. Uh, I know that could get complicated and crazy, um, but that's something that you could have done. I mean, on some of these pages, this looks fine. Like this looks fine, like here, right here. Like it feels like it blends in together. But when you start using uh, the bigger fonts, it starts looking like stickers. And then what really looks like a sticker is when you use like this organic sound effect, this kaboom, and everything's blended in. 
and then you have this this looks like a sticker and this looks organic and I know that one is a sound effect and one is a sound coming out of the monster but this is what we get and maybe with Phil style you have to change up your lettering style again this is a good book I enjoyed it I'm just trying to think about how we could take it to that next level this is a prime example where I'm like okay I'm in on this sound here because this works with Phil's style and then I get to this and I was like no like this color doesn't look like any of the colors in here and it just I don't know it just just doesn't work for me where like this right here all blends all works and probably because there isn't a lot of action sounds or people yelling I think action sounds would work you know sound effects would work but people yelling is where things kind of go down this panel right here is a great panel I like this right here and I like this right here but then this feels out of place and what you could have done is you could have had this panel this panel and then had like a big boom panel with it coming down and then had this panel below you know and probably a little bit lower but like them getting crushed but like then you would have had the weight of the book pressing down on these characters where like this gets you to the page turn but you don't feel the weight of the giant monster on it i get the uh armchair quarterback version where i get to look at what phil did first and then be like how would i improve on phil's amazing work and i have an easy job if we have a giant monster pushing his foot down i'd probably use the weight of the book to do that Okay, so this upcoming panel sequence is my favorite part of the book. Cable, he grabs his sword, and then he gets a memory from the sword. And I love the panel layout, how things are broken up, how there's white panels, and they're kind of bright. I don't know how they pulled that off, but the brightness that Phil did and kind of how it comes in really resonates. And I, I'm kind of in a dark room right now, and this is still very bright. But then also using the dark backgrounds for where you're placing uh, the lettering. So everything kind of looks like it belongs where it is. And you're not getting a very thick border that comes out and makes it look like a sticker. Like this looks like it belongs right here. This belongs. This belongs. This belongs. This belongs. Because you have the blacks and the dark colors in there with the black border of the dialogue box and everything on the on these on these panels work again you get this weird cable yelling style i'm not a fan of it this right here is just glorious and it just i, just, I can't say enough the lightning coming through breaking it up like this storytelling right here is amazing and then you have this box and this box and this box that box like it just sends you on a journey that is amazing overall cable number one written by jerry dugan with art by phil Nato and letters by joe sabino is a good book uh there are some exceptional pages and then there are some average pages but i think the exceptional pages outweigh the average where this is an above average comic book with some great art, some interesting storytelling, where I'm excited to see what happens with these space knights and when they come to Earth and how Cable with his smug youthfulness handles all that chaos and how Phil develops the action with all that. Because it looks like there's gonna be some crazy sword fighting. I think, I hope. I don't know. But I'm Matt Sardo. This is Monkey Fighting Robots and the Panel Breakdown. Let me know what you thought of Cable Number 1. And uh, give this video a thumbs up. And comment. And like us on Facebook and Twitter. And visit our page because we're doing some amazing stuff with reviews over there. And have a great new comic book day.